bottom side of the vehicle and we want to go ahead and remove or loosen our low radiator hose clamp here. We want to slide it back. Well, it does look like our hose clamp actually rotted and just broke off. So we're going to want to be able to get a replacement for that. We're going to grab what's left of our hose clamp here. And we're just going to pop off the remainder of this here. Now you want to have a catch can, a drip bucket, whatever you need. We're going to go ahead and drain the coolant from the cooling system. So let's go ahead and do so. We're going to loosen this hose a little bit. Work this back. Be sure you're wearing safety glasses when performing a job like this. Let's go ahead and let this start running out. Okay, I'm just going to take some paper towels, I'm going to roll these up, twist them up and just kind of stuff them into the neck here because as we start to work this, coolant will come out and we're not going to get our drain pin underneath until we lift, get this lowered down to the ground. We don't want it running all over the ground. So let's go ahead and move our drain bucket and let's lower the vehicle. On the back side of the cooling fan, there's going to be a wiring harness. And we're going to go ahead and use our trim tool here to go ahead and pop these plastic buttons off of the fan itself. There's the second one right here. While we're here, we're also going to go ahead and disconnect the wiring harness right here. We're just going to reach out, pull the little spring tab down and grab the connector and wiggle that off separate that like so. Now right above the fan motor there's going to be another connector here for the harness. I'm going to go ahead and pop that off. Let's get that all loose. Let's go ahead and remove the air intake hose here from the throttle body. There's a hose clamp in here. We're going to go ahead and use a flathead or Phillips head screwdriver. Turn the screw counterclockwise. I'm going to go ahead and open up that hose clamp. All right, with that loose, we're then going to come on over to this hose right here. I'm just going to pop this hose off right here. I'm going to use a small pick. And on the mass airflow sensor right here, we're going to pull up on the little safety lock clip. Press down on the tab and wiggle the harness off of the sensor. Pop that off. Now there's four T25 torque screws holding the upper air box together. Let's go ahead and get those loosened and removed.
Go ahead and grab the upper box. Pull this off of the throttle body. Go ahead and set that aside. I want to go ahead and remove this hose from the valve cover. We use our pliers, loosen up this clamp, work that back, and then we'll just go ahead and use our pliers, work this hose off. I'm going to follow the hose back, pop this out of its retaining clips. It's going to bring us right over to the air filter in the air box base. Now there's a screw right here. I'm going to go ahead and loosen that. This will allow this rubber mount to be released. Now part of the air box base has the air intake right here. I'm just going to go ahead and slide this back a little bit. base. Go ahead and lift the whole unit up and out. Now we have our transmission vent right here. I'm just basically going to lift up on this. It's held on with like little retainer hooks. You might have to use a small pick or a pry tool. has a little plastic or metal locking clasp right here that presses onto the plastic. Let's go ahead and set that aside. Now we're going to go ahead and use our pry tool and remove this wiring harness retainer from the cooling fan. Pop that off. And we're going to follow these wires up right into this little section right here. Let's go ahead and Pull these up out of the way just to get those loose. Now what we want to do is just grab our harness that has been released, pull it up and just tuck it away on the side and up out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and remove the upper radiator hose starting with the clamp right here. Compress that clamp and you can go ahead and work this right back. Radiator is drained. ahead take that hose and just tuck that off to the side. I'm going to go ahead and release the cooling fan. There's going to be two mounting tabs and they're just like spring loaded. I'm going to lift up on that little plastic there. We're going to use a plastic trim tool so we don't damage the fins or the radiator itself. I'm going to lift this up, gently get between that the fan and the radiator and just pry that just gently and we'll release that tab and get to the one beside it and do the same. I'm going to go ahead and try and remove the fan. We're going to lift straight upward. Drop it down. Spin it sideways. And you could either drop it from the bottom or we're going to do it by lifting it upward. Just working the wires and the hoses out of the way as we do so. Go ahead and set that aside. Now using our trim tool, we're going to go ahead and remove the upper buttons across the top of the grill. Just pop up the center and then pry out the bottom part of the button. We're going to do this for all four. I'm going to go ahead and release our caps right here. I'm just going to pry this back and pop that out. Do the same for the other side. Go ahead and set these aside. Go ahead and use your pry tool and just pop out the base right here.
once that is out, go ahead and repeat for the other side. Now from underneath the vehicle, the radiator itself has a plastic tab right here that is actually latching it onto the AC condenser. So you wanna just bring that tab a little bit, bend it, pull it and separate it. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same on the other side over here. There's just two of these. And I'm just gonna use a pick to assist in this. two components are separated at the bottom. Let's go back up top and go ahead and separate them up top. Now I'm going to go ahead and put a catch can underneath the radiator that were there when we go ahead and shift our radiator out and tip it to move it out. Any residual coolant will be able to go into that drain bucket instead of all over the floor. Now on the top here we're going to go ahead and separate the radiator from the AC condenser by gently lifting upward and releasing the upper lock clips. radiator down now at this point here we want to go ahead and disconnect the AC condenser and the line going to it you do want to professionally have the AC system evacuated you do not want to expose any of the chemicals into the atmosphere um, that is illegal uh, not only uh, illegal but it is a poisonous gas. So you want to make sure that uh, you have that taken care of. I'm going to go ahead and remove this 13 millimeter nut using a deep socket and an extension. Go ahead and remove this nut and we can go ahead and lift this up, set this aside. Now on the bottom of the AC condenser, we have another line right here, right underneath is the 13 millimeter nut holding that. So let's go ahead and loosen this. Once that's loose, you should be able to spin that off by hand. And then we'll go ahead and separate this unit from the AC condenser. Now there are O-rings on here. You can see this an O-ring on this unit. You don't want to leave that stuck anywhere. There is a electrical connector right here. Now we're going to go ahead and use a pick. We want to go ahead and disconnect the electrical connector right here.
have it. Um, let's go ahead and grab our AC condenser. We're going to slide it over just like we did the radiator. Twist it sideways, lower it down to the bottom, and out through the bottom of the vehicle. Now on our old AC condenser, there are mounting studs, one right here, and there's one over here. We actually received some new studs for our new AC condenser. If you don't have studs, you simply want to remove these and swap them over. We're going to go ahead and use a dab of blue Loctite on here. I'm going to go ahead and thread this in. And once that's bottomed out, we're just going to use a small pair of pliers and just snug that up in there. I'm going to go ahead and do the same for the second one here. Wipe off the excess. Using a 14 millimeter wrench, we're going to go ahead and remove this sensor right here. Now I want to go ahead and remove this O ring. Gently going to work that off. Ideally, you want to go ahead and replace these O-rings. In our case, we're going to reuse this O-ring. And before installation, we're going to put it in some AC PAG oil. This is a specific type. You don't want to use engine oil, transmission fluid, none of that specific AC PAG oil. Now we're going to slip this onto the new fitting. Take our switch right here, line that up and thread that on. I'm going to go ahead and snug that down. the bottoms out just snug it. Now on these AC lines there are orange o-rings yours might be a different color but we did apply some PAG oil to this here and we applied some PAG oil to this upper o-ring right here. Now we're going to drop our AC condenser down sideways and once it gets down to a certain point we're going to feed it back up and over to the passenger side. Swing this over in place. Now we're going to go ahead and start connecting our connectors. I'm going to install our bolt on the bottom side here. And get the nut started on our lower connector right here. I'm just going to thread that down as far as I can. All right, then we're going to move up to the upper one. I'm going to go ahead and install the upper hose right here. Get that nut started on there. I'm 
I'm going to go ahead and snug those down. Do the same for the bottom. Grab your connector, line this up, and push this on. You should hear a little click right into place. I'm going to go ahead and feed our radiator up from the bottom. Swing it over in front of our AC condenser. And you're going to have to manipulate some hoses and wires out of the way a little bit. Bottom of the radiator has little posts on it. I'm going to go ahead and line those posts up with the rubber bushings in front of the AC condenser and drop those little posts down inside those bushings. bottom of the radiator and we have our posts here that need to go into these rubber bushings. At the same time, we need to get these plastic retainer tabs underneath our AC condenser. There's two of them left and right hand side. And then we have another post on the far right over here. So we need to raise up that AC condenser. Line up the tabs, line up the condenser with the radiator. side of the condenser lined up and in. We got the other clip lined up and in. We got our rubber bushings lined up and our radiator set in. So we're all locked in down below and our mounts are mounted. Let's move back up top. I want to go ahead and install our lower radiator hose. Our existing clamp had rusted and broke away when we removed it. So I want to go ahead and install our standard hose clamp. I'm going to go ahead and remove our rag right here. I'm going to slide this on. Pull the rag out of the bottom of our radiator and slip the hose on. And we'll tighten that up afterward. Now the bottom of the radiator fan or the cooling fan, there's going to be two tabs, one here and there's one right here. And these actually fit into these mounts right here. And there's one over to the left right here. So let's go ahead and lower the fan down inside and get those inserted. Go 
ahead and manipulate the fan around a little bit. You can go ahead and press the upper part of the fan back. Pop that in and repeat for the other side over here. All right. I'm going to go ahead and install our rubber mounts here. There's one on the other side. Good install our lock tab on our retainer. in the lock and then repeat for the other side. Go ahead and install our four upper bumper push pins or retainers. Now I'm going to go ahead and install our harness up on the little retainer tab there. And I work our way around and installing our harness pieces. Now any of these tabs that have retainer buttons on there, you want to go ahead and pop those into place. I'm going to follow all the way down and install the rest of the harness. Now some of our retainers here don't want to grab onto where they used to be. So you can simply use zip ties, retaining straps. Just make sure that they don't interfere with the operation of the fan itself. So we can zip tie this up out of the way. I'm going to run a few of these down and around. Once you have those tied up, go ahead and just snip off the excess. We're going to install our transmission vent tube here. It's a little metal retainer clip, and it just presses onto the plastic here. That's that. I'm going to go ahead and install our upper radiator hose. I'm going to open up that hose clamp and go ahead and slide this hose on. Once that is in place, we can go ahead and release the clamp. Now let's go ahead and grab our fan connector. Line that up and just press that up. 
You hear an audible click and it'll be locked in place. Now let's go ahead and tighten up our lower radiator hose clamp. And then snug that up. Now we're gonna go up top and we're gonna fill up the cooling system with the recommended coolant from the manufacturer and uh, should be all set with that. Now when installing the lower part of your air box, there are two plastic studs right here. They're actually going to press in two, two rubber grommets. Let's go ahead and lower this down. Line this up into place. Pop that in, and then we can go ahead and connect our air intake tube right here. That'll snap on. We're going to install our rubber stabilizer clamp right here. Press this down, working that rubber grommet into place. And you're going to take your screw, line that up, and we'll go ahead and screw that in. And then drop in your air filter. And then take the air box cover. While we're lining this up, we're also going to put the intake tube onto the throttle body. Work that into place. Line up the lid. And we'll get our four screws installed. Let's go ahead and get our four screws started. After we get all four of these started, we'll go ahead and come back and we'll snug them all down. Now when tightening these here, once you feel this screw snug down, you want to go just a hair a bit more. All right, now that we have those installed there, and take your tube right here, pop that into place. Grab your mass airflow sensor connector, line that up. Press that on so you hear it click and then press the safety lock down into place. Let's go in and tighten up the intake tube hose clamp. Just snug that down. Go ahead and snap that on here. And we'll go ahead and line this up and put this onto the valve cover. I'm gonna use our pliers and just move this clamp down into place and we'll get that popped on. All right, let's go ahead and use the appropriate coolant for the system.
So we did go ahead and fill up our Degas bottle, our overflow tank, to the full line. We're gonna go ahead and start the vehicle and let the system purge and take what it needs for coolant. We'll keep an eye on it and fill it as needed. And once we have the engine running and our coolant level is up to our max line, you wanna go ahead and let it run for a little bit and let that uh, give the engine time to warm up. Let that thermostat open up and take what it needs for coolant. Once that thermostat opens up, it could take a half hour, it could take 40 minutes. That should take more coolant and then you can refill or fill to the max line as necessary. At this point here, we're all set. I'm gonna go ahead and close the cap. Watch for any bubbles coming up through this here for any other burping or purging. If you don't see any, you should be all set. 